I was in School of Public Health from 77 to 78, and during that time realized that almost all the epidemiology that was being taught was related to the chronic diseases. And that indeed, the major health problems of the country were tied up in chronic diseases. Sure, infectious diseases still were important, but they, chronic diseases were not getting much attention from traditional public health entities, including the CDC. So I came back to the CDC, placed in the Office of Program Planning, and uh, began to start an effort to create a f real focus for chronic diseases at the Centers for Disease Control. Disease control at CDC was tuberculosis control, an infectious disease. Um, Workplace safety, for instance, was did we have an outbreak at a plant of an infectious disease? There really was not a focus at CDC, nor an interest. In fact, for the whole country, chronic disease prevention was not on the radar screen. There were occasional um, investigations of cancer clusters, but that really wasn't the full picture for cancer either. So began to put together proposals around those early years, early 80s, for a organizational piece of CDC that looked at diabetes, heart disease, the cancers, and the risk factors for them. And uh, at, we got some outside consultants in. We had innumerable meetings and discussions about how to make this happen. And then in 1988, uh, Jim Mason, who was director of CDC at the time, uh, requested a reorganization of CDC to include a National Center for Chronic Disease Prevention and Health Promotion. And there it was. It was really an emerging time. CDC had begun doing more grant making in the chronic disease areas, but it was still an area of modest size in the states. As the commitment at CDC came to create the new center, it was also as evidenced by NACDD that the states were recognizing that they needed to come together. I can only speak from the CDC side as to why it was so valuable for us. There's a large variation in the size and the types of programs. We needed a place that would bring together the concerns of the field as a whole so that we could have that kind of dialogue. NACDD was the place that did that for us. Between those early days of chronic disease control and today, I think largely we've got a better informed public. We no longer have a pro-smoking culture. We've developed a culture which is uh, really anti-tobacco and which has been effective in improving the health of millions of people. The names of those chronic diseases are ones that resonate with people as ones that they're either concerned about, again, for their own health or their family's health. This turning point for NACDD, um, sort of what's the next 30 years going to be about, I think, um, to remember as you work on this very, very challenging area. Membership in the organization need to, in my opinion, hit a balance between the urgency that is needed to work with speed, to make a difference quickly, and the complexity of the solutions. That you really need time to make a difference on such complex problems and probably a dose of patience. This work is a calling. We're never gonna be paid enough. We're never gonna be have enough things to, to make our lives necessarily better. But the work we do is so much more important because it's bigger than us. NACDD can do something that's unique in public health in America because they have the voice, they have the credibility because who the members are and who they represent 
And because they are more free than any other organization to speak truth, and we need that. Our members are amazing. They work in very hard conditions. They're very passionate people. There is very little fame in the work that they do, but they do it because they really love and they care for the people they're trying to serve in their states. We've worked in Puerto Rico. We've worked in the Pacific, where the capacity is very low, where there's not very many people doing the work that needs to be done, and the conditions are really hard but they're still out there every single day trying to make it better for the populations that they're serving. And that's amazing to me. I was the deputy director of the National Center for Chronic Disease Prevention and Health Promotion for its first 10 years. And I know that the leadership of NACDD, not just the president, not just the board of directors, but those informal leaders people all over the country who were the chronic disease directors. And this is way back when, you know, the first 10 or 15 years. I was on their speed dial. Anytime something went wrong or an opportunity was about to be missed, they would call. They were calling to prevent problems, to share a poignant story that would reinforce how important these issues were. I could count on them to call and call early and often. It made my day and saved me many times. There's great pleasure in preventing something or in treating something and making the person well in many areas, whether it's injury control and the use of seat belts and airbags and safer driving whether it is uh, the infectious diseases we well know about as being exciting and offer uh, opportunities for control and prevention for populations. Um, this is the, the, the bottom line for us in the field of chronic disease control. These are the big killers and to be able to make a difference and extend people's lives and make those extended years ones that are healthier and more enjoyable for them. Uh, that's a high calling but a great pleasure and a sense of real accomplishment. We work very, very hard to be, again, collaborative, to try to work with members of Congress to make sure that they understand the important niche that chronic disease programs play in the United States in really preventing preventable disease. I've lived in a food desert and hadn't had access to um, great health care and um, healthy food options that were affordable. Um, I think when I come across other situations like that, uh, it speaks to just maybe the little girl inside of me that experienced a lot of those things growing up. I've been able to provide for my children a different kind of lifestyle, but it still doesn't change my own experiences. The thing that excites me most about working with our members is being able to provide solutions for them to help them do their jobs better. As a lifelong learner myself, I try to encourage people to look for opportunities to expand their knowledge. I enjoy that I work for a company that really prides itself in um, having professional development be the cornerstone of the work that we do. I think one of the things that we all have to recognize that for any really important societal problem, we will never have enough money for the problem, and that's especially the case in chronic disease, and we'll never have enough authority to compel the kinds of actions that might be the most effective. We have influence, and that influence comes from the information we have and its timeliness, and it comes from the relationships we build and the partnerships we can make. NACDD, its members are themselves a crucial relationship, but they're also themselves the builder of relationships with other partners at the state, locally, with federal agencies. It's absolutely crucial that they recognize the importance of that strength and role uh, going forward. The National Association of Chronic Disease Directors may be unique in their ability to bridge the different sectors that are absolutely required to have an effective prevention and control program in chronic disease. It's not just the health sector, it's not just public health for sure, but it's even transportation, 
how our communities are built, policies that are not created in the health world. NACDD is unique in being able to bridge all of those sectors and be a convener of the disparate parts needed for an effective solution. I want our members to feel like this is an important endeavor that they want to participate in. I want our funders to think that we uh, provide something that nobody else provides to them. Gosh, I want, um, I want organizations like us to grow and be successful. I don't ever want to see another public health organization dissolve because of lack of resources or any other reason. I think that we have such tremendous value and I want to see us do more in helping our partners be successful. In 30 years from now, I hope this organization and its members can look back on more than a half a century of steady progress. There'll be some winners and losers. Everything is not a perfect smooth path. But I hope that we can start bending the curve in more arenas. Um, and have that many more successes chalked up and stand and take credit for them. <laughs>